Hey guys, so in this video I'm gonna be taking a look at the Epic 460 amp hour battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate chemistry in this battery, and it's 12.8 nominal voltage. So that is 5.8 kilowatt hours. It has a continuous discharge rating of 200 amps, but it can surge up to 400 amps for around 10 seconds. It comes with overcharge protection, discharge protection, over temperature protection, but it does have built-in heaters, so that's a bit unique for some 12 volt batteries, especially with this capacity. The cells in here are rated for 4,000 cycles at 80% discharge. You can put four of these in series to get 48 volts, which, I mean, there's a lot cheaper options if you were gonna do that. And I'll show you guys the app in a little bit, but actually the app allows for paralleling batteries together. So Current Connected sent me this battery. They carry the Epic battery. So I'm gonna be taking a look inside this battery. I actually wanna look inside here and see how it looks because they do have another model. This is actually the budget model. They have another model with actually a built-in T-class fuse. It looks pretty cool. I've seen other videos on it. But yeah, this is a cheaper model with a lot of similar stats. So we'll do a discharge test on this first and then I'll pop it open, see what it looks like inside. So the app is pretty decent. You can actually see here, this is an example of what it would look like if you had two batteries in parallel. And it lets you see all the basics, cell temperature, uh, stuff like that. There is some advanced settings that it says you need a password for. I didn't mess with any of that, but yeah, I mean, it gives you, I like the graphics in it, but it's essentially just an app, right? You can uh, control, uh, you can turn off charging and discharging, all that. So this is the fancy setup that I have to test the capacity on the Epic battery here. We're going straight from the terminals through a Victron shunt and down to a Phoenix inverter, a Victron Phoenix inverter. If you guys haven't seen one of these before, these are awesome. I can actually pop this apart in another video if you guys want me to, but there's a little transformer inside of it. So it's a low frequency 12 volt inverter. They also make these in 24 and 48 volts. These are super nice inverters. So I'll be back once this battery is completely drained and we'll see how the capacity test turned out. Man, I am impressed with this little thing. I have had it uh, over 1200 watts. So right around 1230 watts for hours now. And you can actually see the alarm light has been going off since I started it on the back there. And it is still kicking. No issue, still outputting power. So this is actually a test for the battery and this, I guess. I've never tested it this hard, but yeah, it does a fantastic job for sure. All right, so we actually reached 464. I just didn't get a snapshot of it. And then once it cut off for low voltage, it didn't save in history the correct way. I need to figure this out. I haven't dealt with the shunt enough as far as memory and history. Usually it'll save in the history there, but it didn't this time. But yeah, at least I got a snapshot of the 462, 462 amp hours. But I think it went to 462, 465, something like that. So I didn't get a screenshot of that because I thought I would just look at the history. Not sure if you guys can hear it, but it is absolutely pouring outside. Trying to get underneath this lip here so I can get it started. There we go. Oh man, it stinks so bad. <laughs> Certainly not a new car smell. Almost there. I don't want to pinch any of these wires. There's plenty of slack here though. There we go. So before I take this lid off, I'm gonna actually unbolt it down below. But you can see I just accessed the app and you can see the Bluetooth module there just came on. All right, I just disconnected the main positive so that way I could take the lid off. This is a 200 degrees Celsius two gauge conductor here. The negative coming off of the BMS has three different negative conductors. These are six gauge. And coming from the main negative lead, we have the same thing. We have three different six gauge cables. And somebody else can look that BMS up if they want to, but it looks like it's a 250 amp. I know that tape is distorting a little bit from the Bluetooth module there, but let me focus in. Yeah, it's a 250 amp BMS. And this is really neat how they situated the cells. This is something to be cautious about if anyone ever thinks that they can stack batteries on their side without checking the manual. These are actually, the cells are situated on their side. So that is the business end here on the bottom. 
you can see all the different bus bars running along this side. And this is actually the bottom of the cells over here. So the front of this battery is where the top of the cells are actually. They have insulation on all of the battery leads that I can see at this angle. Ugh. Well, that was a bear to get out of there, um, but we're not gonna be able to see too much more. You guys can see here, they actually have an insulated shield in between the bus bars that are laser welded on to the cells. But yeah, this is pretty slick as far as wire management. Everything is clean, comes off of the board here, all the leads, everything's insulated coming off the board. And these are bendable. So as it slid into the case, these just compress down like that. And everything is glued up with that white goop that they have. Somebody got a little over ambitious on this one here. But yeah, I think these are the leads to the heating pads themselves. So you have four different ones. And I think those run in between the cells. That's got to be what they are. I've never seen anyone else do it that way, but that is pretty neat. I would actually prefer to see everyone moving towards a system like this. Way less chance of having any pinched wires or issues like that. You've got very short wire runs to this board. And then from that, you have a fairly short lead going from that to the BMS up here. Yeah, overall looks really nice. I'm gonna flip it over here and you guys can see what would be the bottom side. You couldn't make it out in the while it was in the case, but the sides have these foam sections and plastic insulators. And then the bottom has some of that fish paper and it actually had some foam there also. Yeah, very neat build overall. And this is how it was before in the box. And so those little heater pad leads just fold down and this goes across here. I was actually wrong about this. On the sides, both sides here, this is actually powder coated metal on the sides. Really nice, I thought that was plastic. All right guys, well that was fun, I like this battery. And Epic Batteries has sort of set themselves apart. Their build quality is great, and when you couple that with being able to get it through Current Connected, then I don't think anyone will have any issues at all. Current Connected has a great reputation for tech support and service. And this battery comes with an 11 year warranty. And you can get cheaper 460 amp hour batteries. There's not a whole bunch of 460 amp hour batteries on the market actually. And aside from the build quality, it's the heater that sets this apart. So if somebody wanted to put these in a camper or something, for instance, you're not gonna have to worry about temperature. As many of you probably already know by now, lithium iron phosphate does not like to charge below 32 degrees. So it'll actually ruin the batteries. It can discharge lower than that. So the temperature can be much lower than that to discharge, but in order to charge, it does need to be 32 degrees or higher. And that's Fahrenheit, so freedom temperature. A friend of mine actually got two of the other type of the Epic batteries, the 460 amp hour ones I mentioned in the beginning. And I think those are like $400 or $500 more per battery. But they have other things in them. Like I mentioned, the T-Class fuse that's built into the battery itself. It's the first time I've ever seen anybody do that. I actually want to get my hands on one of them because they look really cool. So to compare these two, since I've taken this apart, it'd be neat to take one of them apart also. But yeah, anyway, he has two of those batteries he installed in a camper van, a Mercedes camper van. It's pretty neat. So it had a AGM battery in there before in this little undercarriage that he had and he had just enough space. He actually modified it a little bit to be able to fit two of those batteries in it. And those actually have battery communication capabilities, those other batteries. So you can hook up to a Victron and I believe they have other protocols also. So yeah, guys, I will leave a link in the description below to this battery here at Current Connected. And within this next little bit, I actually have some other 12 volt batteries to look at. I have another large one like this and a small budget battery. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.